as I walk this great unknown. Questions come, questions go. What's that purpose for the pain? Did I cry these tears in vain? I don't want to live in fear. I want to trust that you are Trust your grace can be seen in both triumph and tragedy. I had this love in the depth of my soul. In the blood of the fire, you are with me and you are made August 9th worship service of the Ridley Park Presbyterian Church. I have a few announcements as we begin. First off, a couple opportunities to give. One is to children at the school in Lungi, Sierra Leone, sponsored by Springs of Joy Ministries, uh, and they need toothbrushes, toothpaste, and bar soap. And if you can bring those items to the church, uh, there is a collection bin uh, in the alcove entrance, which is the entrance next to the Memorial Garden. You can place those things in there. They're being collected regularly through the end of August and will be delivered at that time. Also, Gemma Services, which used to be the village, which before that was Presbyterian Children's Village, is a ministry to children, and uh, typically during this time of year, we collect backpacks for them so that they can have those to go to school. But since school is different this year, they do not have need of backpacks, but they have a number of other items that they do need. So uh, there is a list of those items available at uh, bit.ly slash... G-E-M-M-A-N-E-E-D-S, N-E-E-D-S, uh, bit.ly 
Gemma needs. And uh, on there, you can find what they need. You can pay for it. It will be sent uh, directly to Gemma Services and bless them in that way. I ha we have a, few, um, a couple Bible studies ongoing. One is a study of Chip Ingram's The Real God. That's a men's study. And uh, that study meets via Zoom on Tuesdays uh, at 7 o'clock. If you'd like an invitation to that, uh, please uh, let us know and we'll be glad to get you an invitation to that Bible study. The second Bible study is open to everyone and that is Kyle Eidelman's Not a Fan. And Eidelman's point is Jesus never asked for fans, he asked for followers. And this study meets on Thursdays at 7 also via Zoom. Both of these uh, studies are available on Right Now Media. If you have an account through Ridley Park Presbyterian Church, you can find them in the libraries section of the Right Now Media page uh, under Ridley Park Presbyterian Church. And there's a whole list of uh, various things that we have looked at or uh, are appropriate to the life and ministry of our church. And these Bible studies are listed there as well. We encourage you to continue to give to the life and ministries of the church as we continue uh, to seek to do the work of the kingdom of God. And if you look at our website, uh, rppcusa.org, you'll find a number of things, a number of... Uh, a lot of information about who we are and what we do uh, and there's also at the top right uh, a tab that where you can uh, hit and give to the church through that give an online gift uh, you're also welcome to continue to send your tithes and offerings to the church address and we're collecting them and we want to thank uh, all of our members and friends for your faithfulness through, through this time as you continue to support through your giving and through your prayers the life and ministry of the Ridley Park Presbyterian Church. And one more thing, I've said it a few times but I, I want to reiterate that if you have any needs please let us know. We want to continue to be the church, continue to uh, support and encourage you. So we don't know all the needs that are out there unless you tell us. And if you tell us, we will seek to help you out in whatever way we can. So be, please be in contact with us. Now, let us pray together. Gracious God, thank you for your hand upon our lives, for your hand upon your church. Strengthen us to be faithful to you in all that we are and all that we do. We pray that through this service of worship, your Holy Spirit would minister to us to draw us into deeper fellowship with you and greater faithfulness to your call upon us as ambassadors of your kingdom. We pray thanking you for your presence with us through the Holy Spirit, for the forgiveness we have received in Jesus Christ and the hope that we have in him. We pray this in his name. Amen.
lesson is about making good choices and, ma- and being wise. In today's lesson, we'll learn what it means to be smart, what it means to be wise, and how we can make good decisions. So first, what does it mean to be smart? Being smart means... Being like everything you can know. Knowing things, learning and studying, and reading books and listening in class and learning about things, knowing facts and information. Being wise is a little bit different than being smart, but wisdom 
is making good choices, making good decisions based off of the knowledge that you have, right? So we all want to be wise. We want to make wise choices to glorify God. When we know that our veggies are good for us, it would be wise to eat them. <laughs> when we know that a helmet protects us on our bicycle, it would be wise to wear it. When we know that we shouldn't watch too much TV, it would be wise to to just know that <laughs> and maybe play a game or with another toy. When we know that we should share with our brothers or sisters, it would be wise to to share with them. Correct. It's really important to make wise decisions and Sometimes it might be really hard to figure out how to do that. But one of the things that we can be assured of is that knowledge of God through the Bible can help us make good decisions and help us be wise. So we'll know if we're being wise when this is true. When our wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. We read that from James 3.17 in the New Testament. We'll also know we're being wise because we'll feel blessed. Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding. We read this in Proverbs 3.13. And finally, if we find it hard to be wise, what can we do? Pray to Jesus. We can pray. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given, again, assured to us in the Bible in James 1.5. Let us pray. Dear God, help me make good choices. Thank you for giving us the Bible to give us the knowledge and the wisdom to make good decisions to glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Please join me in the unison prayer of confession, followed by a time of silently confessing our sins before God. Holy and righteous God, humbly we come to you asking for your forgiveness. Too often we find ourselves chasing after frivolous things, worrying about tomorrow, and acting as if the promises within your word are not true. We place our trust in what we can touch and see, even though we know those things will not last. Give us faith and courage to put our hope and trust in you. You alone are God, and you provide us with everything we could ever need. Be glorified in our lives, in our homes, and in your church, we pray. And now let us silently confess our sins before God. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Friends, in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. The wicked flee, though no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. An angry person stirs up conflict, and a hot-tempered person commits many sins. Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. 
like a city whose walls are broken through, is a person who lacks self-control. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Anger is cruel and fury overwhelming, but who can stand before jealousy? A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots to the bones. Do not fret because of evildoers or be envious of the wicked, for the evildoer has no future hope and the lamb of the wicked will be snuffed out. Do not let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. There is a, surely a future hope for you and your hope will not be cut off. The soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. Lighten the messenger's eyes brings joy to the heart, and good news gives health to the bones. Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Please pray with me. Holy God, we thank you for your word to us and pray that you would use it to accomplish your purposes in us and then through us as your Holy Spirit moves to give us a deeper understanding and a more full appreciation of the truth of your word, the truth of your promises, and may we reorient our lives around those truths, around your promises, by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We're continuing through the book of Proverbs, and today we're looking at uh, the concept of our soul and keeping our soul healthy by keeping our souls wise. And the theme verse is 423, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. And what we find through these verses is that the heart needs to be confident, the heart needs to be controlled, the heart needs to be contented, and the heart needs to be counseled. So let's look first at the heart needs to be confident. Many times, most of us, I would say, uh, gauge happiness by circumstance. We say, I'll be happy if, I'll be happy when, I'll finally feel good about things when, or maybe, like especially during COVID, uh, when this is over, I'll be able to be happy again. But happiness, according to scripture, is not based in circumstance, but based in the condition of our souls. Verse uh, 22 of chapter 17, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. A broken body endures if there's a strong spirit, but a broken spirit overwhelms the whole person. And we've seen this. When someone has confidence, they can uh, go through all kinds of terrible things and still maintain joy. But even when things are going well, if a person can't have or doesn't have that sense of joy, they can't endure much of anything. And it's important to understand, and, and especially we learn this through looking at the, the prayers of, of St. Paul as he writes to the churches, he never ever prays that uh, things would go easily for them, that there would be uh, an end to uh, some trial they're going through. What he prays for them is for their souls, for their spirits. Uh, a couple prayers from Ephesians, first of, from chapter 1. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation that you may know him better. And then um, from Ephesians chapter 3. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with prayer through the Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, 
may have power together with all God's, all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge. Paul prayed for their spirits, for their souls. Paul prayed that they would be strong in their relationship with God and that he, because he knew that that strength is what they really, truly needed. And that's true for us as well. And Proverbs uh, tells us that too, that it is much more important that our souls be settled, that our spirits be connected, that our hearts know the promises of God and live with the confidence that those promises give us than it is for everything to go well in our lives. The condition of our soul is based on our relationship with God. And Paul knew that it was vital that the people to whom he wrote have a strong relationship with God, and to that end, he prayed. Verse 28, or chapter 28, verse 1, which was read, The wicked flee, though no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. So once again, we know that our soul, the condition of our soul is most important for us, for our spiritual health, and, and as we see in many of these verses, even for our physical health. And what we see in this verse is the one who is not righteous is always afraid, unable to trust. But the one who is righteous is as bold as a lion. Now, that's not just about personal um, confidence or lack of confidence. What it's about is our walk with God and our relationship with God. And when we are confident in our relationship with God, we can be bold and our hearts can be strong and we can be confident. Uh, Hebrews says um, we can boldly approach the throne of grace because of what Jesus Christ has done. So if you are in Christ, you are righteous. You are one of these that can uh, be bold as a lion. So remind yourself of God's truth, of God's promise, and may your heart be confident. And I encourage you, go back later today and through the week and look at those prayers in Ephesians 1 and Ephesians 3 and allow Paul and me and your brothers and sisters in the church to pray that prayer for you so that you may develop confidence in God's love and mercy toward you. Our hearts are to be confident. Secondly, our hearts need to be controlled. An angry person stirs up conflict and a hot-tempered person commits many sins. The one who is doesn't control their temper causes all kinds of problems. We looked at that a few weeks ago and we looked at anger. Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. Like a city whose walls are broken through is a person who lacks self-control. In other words, um, if you lack self-control, you have no defenses because you don't defend yourself and you, are, you present yourself as weak. But if you can develop self-control, you are stronger than one, a warrior that can take a city. And that is, it's so important for us to continue to learn to control, to control those impulses, be they anger or whatever they might be, to say, no, I don't go by my impulses, I live by the word of God. Throughout Proverbs, we find that the idea of trusting our emotions as our directing force, the directing force of our lives is foolish. There was a time, when we talked about this a few weeks ago too, when um, the popular culture said, just express whatever feeling you have, that's the best way to live. And since then, the psychological community has said, that is not the best way to live, it is actually destructive. So scripture has stood the test of time in telling us to control our emotions, not to immediately jump with whatever impulse we might have, but to consider the truth of God as the force and the truth around which we build our lives. 
It's interesting, a passage that um, I think many of us maybe haven't noticed before, but in Genesis chapter 4, after uh, Cain uh, brings his sacrifice and his brother brings his sacrifice, uh, Cain was upset. Um, and the Lord said to Cain, this is verse 6 of chapter 4 of Genesis, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. God did not say, Cain, I don't accept you. I, he just didn't accept the sacrifice. And all Cain needed to do was bring another sacrifice and it would have been accepted. But instead, he allowed his jealousy uh, toward his brother Abel, whose sacrifice was accepted, to cause him to be angry and to cause him to murder. But God had warned him. God had said, you don't need to let sin win. But Cain disregarded God's counsel and ended up doing a terrible thing. Now, it's important, I think, for us to understand throughout these verses, especially as I continually focus on uh, 20, 423, above all, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. And uh, the word heart in our common usage is has a different meaning than what heart means uh, in the Old Testament scriptures and even the New Testament scriptures. It's important for us to understand that because I think most of us think heart means emotion. So when we read guard your heart, we guard our emotions, which is a good thing to do, but the heart is more than our emotions. In fact, in um, old times, uh, the, the stomach was thought to be the source of emotions. You have a gut feeling, you know, well that, and the word um, for, in Greek, for, uh, feel, for compassion is splodna, which means intestines, because that's where they figured the, the feelings came from. And of course, the mind is where the thoughts are. The heart was more than just the place where feelings were. The heart is considered to be the directive uh, mechanism of the, of the person, our soul our sense of what is right and what is wrong that then takes the thoughts and takes the feelings and directs them uh, in the proper way to go. And those of us who know the truth of God's word have a way to direct our soul to, direct the, to then direct our thoughts and our feelings and our actions. As we learned, wisdom is having the right thoughts, but then having the right actions. And to understand the truth of God's word and God's promises is the way for us to help the rest of us know the right thing to do. And that is because we know the big story. We know that we are fallen creatures. We don't trust all of our impulses because we know that um, sin has entered humanity. We are not uh, the way we should be. But we also know that Jesus Christ came to pay the price of that sin and all those who are in Christ are made new. We are forgiven of all of that sin. So we live in this new story where we know that sin still exists within us and that one day it will be gone. But because of what Jesus Christ has done and will do in the new kingdom. But right now, we know that we have to guard our hearts, control our hearts. And we control our hearts by understanding the, the overarching story of creation fall and redemption with the promise of God's eternal kingdom. Miroslav Wolf said it this way, the certainty of God's just judgment at the end of history is the presupposition for the renunciation of violence in the middle of history. So in other words, because we know that God will ultimately make everything right, we know that it is not our job to fight back, to work out of undisciplined emotions. But as uh, Paul said in, in Romans 12, 
We do not take vengeance, but trust in the time when God's justice and God's judgment will make all things right. Next, our hearts need to be contented. And these, this we find in uh, chapter 27, verse 4. Anger is cruel and fury overwhelming, but who can stand before jealousy? Now, we often think anger and fury are much bigger than jealousy. But what, what the, the psalmist understood, or the um, writer of Proverbs understood, is that jealousy is deeper. It burns under the surface. It's not always seen, but it impacts the heart in a very, very destructive way. So while anger we see and fury we see, jealousy just lingers and causes people to do all kinds of horrible things. But listen then to uh, verse 30 of chapter 14, a heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. And then parallel passages from chapter 23 and chapter 24, from chapter 23, do not let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. There is surely a future a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. And then from chapter 24, Do not fret because of evildoers or be envious of the wicked, for the evildoer has no future hope, and the lamp of the wicked will be snuffed out. The same way we control and, and seek contentment is the same way we control um, our hearts by remembering the big story. These two passages uh, from chapter 23 and chapter 24 remind me of Psalm 73, my favorite psalm, in which the psalmist, Asaph, looks around and he sees people who are dishonest, he sees people who are arrogant and boastful, and he sees that they are seeming to win the day. People like them. People follow them. They get more and more wealth. They get more and more health. And Asaph looks around. And he said, Lord, is it, is it a waste of my time to follow you, to trust in your goodness? And then he says, until I went into the sanctuary of the Lord, and then I understood. And he understood the very same thing that we find in these verses from Proverbs. The end. What, look at the end. Look at what ultimately will happen and trust in God's ultimate justice. And then as you trust that justice, just like Asaph discovered, you um, turn away from looking around at everyone else and you look up to God and then you discover the joy and wonder of a relationship with God. And a, and a person with a strong relationship with God is a person who is content. then the heart needs to be counseled. The heart needs to be confident. The heart needs to be controlled. The heart needs to be contented. And the heart needs to be counseled. Verse 4 of chapter 15, The soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. 1530, light in a messenger's eyes brings joy to the heart, and good news gives health to the bones. And then 1624, gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Be careful to listen and to know God's word and all those other voices from outside and inside you can say, no, I don't, I don't listen to those voices. I don't orient my life around those voices. I orient my life around the truth that God has revealed. And we have to continually counsel ourselves, remembering that God's word is good. God's word is life-giving. And it is important for us to hear his word. And that word will bring joy to our hearts. It will bring healing to our hearts and even to our bodies as we trust in God's goodness and God's truth. 
But it also reminds us that we need to guard our mouths. We can use our mouths to bring healing. Our voices can bring this good news that this passage talks about, the light in our eyes when we tell people the good news of the gospel, that we tell people the good news of God's love for them, bring, can bring joy to their hearts. And this good news brings health to their bones. And it's interesting here, in verse 15, 4, the soothing tongue is a tree of life. And that word tree of life reminds us of the tree of life in the garden of Eden, the tree of life that we is referenced in Revelation. And that tree of life is the source of life, the source of um, settledness, the source of joy, the source of everything good. And in this world, we have moments, don't we, where we get a new car, we are starting a new relationship. Hopefully, those of you who are married are not starting new relationships, but remember back when. And we're going to talk about that more some, some more next week, so uh, be ready for that. But anyway, the point is um, that newness feels so good. It feels, everything feels wonderful, but then the newness wears off. And what Scripture tells us is this, the tree of life, in other words, what existed in the garden and we had to be pushed away from it with uh, the, the images of swords keeping us from that tree of life. Because if we take the fruit of the tree of life now, be, before the kingdom comes, we'll be stuck where we are. But that tree of life promises us joy and peace and just exhilaration for all eternity. And so when we see this, a soothing word is a tree of life. It's a taste of God's glorious kingdom. Uh, our words can give people a taste of God's glory. And we have the opportunity with our words to bring healing and blessing to others. And something I said a few weeks ago, and we'll say again, we have to use our words on ourselves too, to counsel ourselves, to tell ourselves the truth, to preach the gospel to ourselves over and over again, because we have voices within us and voices from outside of us who tell us we're not worthy, who tell us that um, such and such a thing will be the, the thing that brings us ultimate joy and peace when scripture tells us that no, a relationship with God, a settledness of heart, uh, a, a, a refusal to uh, be discontented with God's goodness and grace exhibited to us is the way to live. And with so many voices telling us so much different, even voices from within ourselves planted there many, maybe decades ago, it is important for us to remind ourselves, God loves you. God has brought salvation to you through Jesus Christ, and God promises to you the fulfillment of all your heart's desires, in part now and in fullness when his kingdom comes, when it comes in its fullness. So guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Guard your soul. Have a wise soul, a soul oriented around the promises of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we do pray that you, by your Holy Spirit, would uh, bring this word to us um, into our souls that we would trust in what you have told us, even amid all the changing words of our generation. We pray that your eternal word would take root in our souls, in our hearts, and guard us against all of the lies, all of the distractions, and keep us focused on you, that our souls, our hearts would be strong because they are anchored on the foundation of your glorious word. 
We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. and obey take my life and let it be amazing grace bring joy to me from Romans 15. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of of the Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, Amen.
It's all you got to lean on, but thank God it's all you need. And all the people said amen. Whoa.